fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. As faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, were camped on one of the small tributaries of the Arkansas River, a few miles from the Santa Fe Trail. They were awaiting the return of Dan Reed, young nephew of the masked man, who had ridden to the stagecoach station to get copies of the Eastern newspapers. Presently, they saw an Indian smoke signal rise from a distant ridge to the south. That message for me, Kimasabi. Me take blanket. Answer message. All right, here, Tonto, take this one. Uh -huh. Quickly, Tonto pulled green grass and piled it over the campfire. Then, with deft strokes, he swung a blanket to and fro, breaking the smoke column into irregular puffs. For the next few moments, Tonto and the Lone Ranger watched the answering puffs of smoke in the distance. So what is it, Tonto? A Tonto's good friend, Chief Little Dog. Him want see me. Chief Little Dog? Ah. He's on the Washita Reservation now. Isn't that right? Him Cheyenne. All Cheyenne on reservation now. You know why he wants to see you? No. Message only say come fast. Very well, he must have a good reason. It's a two-day ride to the Washita. I'd suggest you get started as soon as you've eaten. And you not go? No, Tonto, I'll wait here until Dan gets back. We'll follow tomorrow. Uh, where we meet after me see, Chief. You remember where we camped on the Washita River two years ago? Uh huh. Big storm come up. We stay in big cave. Yes, that's the place. Dan and I'll meet you there. Oh, uh -huh. Me eat now, then go. Oh, when you get to the reservation, report to the agent in charge. Uh, me do that. What agent's name? He's named uh, Lackey, Jim Lackey. He was appointed agent there about a year ago. Ah, uh, me see him first, then see Chief Little Dog. It was several hours later when Dan Reed rode into camp. Ho, ho, Victor, ho, 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 steady, fella. You were gone a long time, Dan. I had to wait, sir. Stagecoach was late. Here are the Eastern Papers. Thanks. Where's Tano? He's on his way to the Washita Reservation. Washita? Yes. He received a message to see his friend, Chief Little Dog. You and I are to meet him at a camp we used two years ago. Golly, I, I hope he doesn't run into trouble. Trouble? What do you mean? Read what it says in the paper, sir. Where? I'll show you. There. There says that any Indians south of the Arkansas River who are found off the reservations are to be considered renegades. If they're caught, they're to be exiled to the Florida Everglades. 
I wish I'd known this before Tunnel left. Couldn't we overtake him? I doubt it. We'll soon be getting dark. Let me read this article in detail. Yes, sir. I didn't get a chance to read it all. I was in a hurry to get back to camp. It seems that Indian renegades who have refused to return to their reservations have been causing trouble. They've terrorized settlers and have been raiding supply trains bound for the agencies. Golly, but sending them to the floor to Everglades seems worse than sentencing them to death. The Everglades are bad, Dan. The huge swamp infested with disease. Indians who are not accustomed to the region don't live long there. I'm worried about Tano. Don't worry, Dan. If he should be picked up by an army patrol, he'd identify himself. Yes, I guess so. Most army people know about Tano. Well, they'd know he's not a renegade. We'll spend the night here and get an early start in the morning. Two days later, Jim Lackey, the agent in charge at the Washita Reservation, stood in the doorway of his quarters and watched a man in the uniform of a sergeant of the United States Cavalry ride up and dismount. Oh, hold on, hold on. Steady, boy. Uh, hi, Bolin. Hello, Lackey. I was wondering when you'd show up. Come on in. Have a seat. Yeah. Any news on the next supply train that's bound for here? Yeah. Yeah, well, there's one on the way somewhere. But I've got bad news for you. Oh, that's so? What is it? These raids you and your men have been staging have raised a squawk in Washington. We've got to lay off for a while until things cool down. Yeah, how do you mean? Well, a messenger rode in from Dodge City yesterday. Because of the raids, the Army's issued orders to arrest all Indians found off their reservations. They're to be considered renegades and sent to the Florida Everglades. <laughs> but it's not Indians who've been doing the raid. Yeah, I know. But in my reports to Washington, I've blamed it on renegades. I want them to keep thinking it's Indians. Yeah, I can see why you would. So do I. I sure wish we could have nabbed this next supply train before them orders were issued. Uh huh. We better leave well enough alone for the time being. That's not all. No? Department of Indian Affairs is threatening to investigate the matter, too. I don't want anybody snooping around here. If we lay low for a while and let the supply trains come through, Washington will soon forget all about it. And what's the Indian Bureau getting excited about? Uh, they're afraid some of their redskins will starve unless the supplies get through. Anyway, I don't want some investigator coming in here and talking to Chief Little Dog. Is he beginning to squawk? Plenty. He's been writing letters to the great White Father on the average of one a week for the past two months. Letters? Can he write? As good as you can. He speaks perfect English as well. Of course, his letters don't get to the great White Father. <laughs> no? Why not? <laughs> if he brings them in here for me to send, I tear them up. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I only hope he don't sneak a letter out sometime. Hey, someone's riding up. Let's change the subject. It's an Indian. Here he comes now. How? Oh. How? Oh. Come on in, Indian. Me want to see man named Lackey. I'm Lackey. What do you want? Me come to see good friend, Chief Little Dog. You got your own rations? Uh-huh. Me got plenty rations. Eh, good thing you have. Grub shy around here right now. Can't be feeding any stray Indians. You have plenty rations soon. How do you mean? Well, on way here, me see supply train. Six wagons. Oh, is that so? How far from the reservation are they? Well, maybe get here tomorrow. Well, that's good news. Uh, where me find Chief Little Dog? Uh, ride west about four miles till you come to the creek, then turn right. Little Dog and his folks are camped upstream a ways. Ah, uh, me go find them. Just a minute, Indian. Uh huh. Where are you from? Me come from north. Oh, me not Cheyenne. What's your name? Me, Tonto. All right, go on, go on. Adios. Adios. Why'd you ask his name, Bone? I've either seen him or heard about him before, but I just can't place where or when. Ah, you're thinking of them Tonto Indians down in Arizona. There's a tribe of them called Tontos. No, no, I don't think so. Well, at any rate, you'd better shove on. Some of your men might spot that supply train and decide to jump it without waiting for you. Yeah, that's right. Well... I'll get going. Drop in now and then. I'll keep you posted on any new developments. I'll do that. Adios. Adios. Meanwhile, Tonto located the lodges of Chief Little Dog and his people, and the chief who prided himself on his ability to write and speak fluent English told of the hunger and poverty of his tribe 
and how his many letters to the great white father in Washington had been ignored. You are a friend of the one called the Lone Ranger. Perhaps he could persuade the great white father to send food and clothing to my people. Isn't that right? But me think great white father get letter from Chief Little Dog. Send plenty supplies right now. Me see supply train, six wagons on way to agency. Maybe arrive tomorrow. I fear that this supply train, like the others, may not get here. It may be attacked and destroyed. Who attacks supply train? The agent lackey says it is renegades among our own people, Tonto. Perhaps it is true. For there are some Indians who refuse to go to reservations. Ah, uh, Indian renegades make plenty trouble. This supply train must get to the reservation or my people starve. Little Dog shall make certain that it does arrive safely. And what you do? I will take 20 of my bravest men. We will go at once and guard the wagons from attack. Oh, that's not good, Chief Little Dog. Agent Lackey maybe make plenty trouble for you. He will not know what we have done until the wagons have arrived safely at the agency. Come, Tonto. You must show us the way. Well, maybe men on supply wagon think we ride to attack. Maybe them shoot at us. I have thought of that, Tonto. We will watch the supply train from the hills. We will show ourselves only if an attack is made on us. Oh, that good. Me go. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Dan Reed had been riding toward the Washita River where they planned to rejoin Tonto. As they topped a ridge overlooking the winding and rugged valley of the river, the Lone Ranger drew up his horse. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, easy, big oh, oh. Why well, are we stopping, sir? Looks like the army's beaten us to our camping ground, Dan. Look down there. Golly. Soldiers. That's where I plan to meet Tonto. It's an excellent camping place. We stopped there two years ago. There must be all of 20 soldiers there, sir. Yes, probably a detachment from Fort Mason looking for renegades. Gosh, I, I hope Tonto doesn't ride in there. What do we do now? We better ride on and find another camp for the night. Then we'll go into the agency in the morning and meet Tonto there. It'll be dark soon. I know a suitable place a few miles from here. Let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, Victor. Hold there. Hold it. Steady, boy. It's me, Sergeant Bolin. Open up, Lackey. Uh, what in thunder are you riding in here this time of the night for, Bolin? You remember that Indian who rode in here today? He did. Yeah, I remember. What about him? I got clean back to camp and they kept pestering me. I knew I'd seen that Indian somewhere. Yeah, I've seen lots of Indians. I saw that Indian about a year ago, just before me and my gang deserted the cavalry. What are you driving at? Lackey, that Indian's the one who rides with a lone ranger. Are you sure of that? Positive. I even remember that paint horse of his now. That means he's here for no good. Chief Little Dog tells him about those letters he wrote to the great white father. We're going to be in a peck of trouble. That's why I rode here to tell you who he is. Olin. Yeah? While I get dressed, you go saddle my horse. We've got to get that Indian before he gets back to the Lone Ranger. Now, get moving. I'll have your horse saddled and waiting by the time you're ready. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When the crooked Indian agent, Jim Lackey, and the deserter Bolin arrived at the camp of Chief Little Dog and his people, he found the chief, Toto, and a number of braves missing. By threats, the two men forced Little Dog's squaw to tell where they had gone. And with this information, they rode out of camp for some distance before Lackey called a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Lackey, what do you make of it? It's the best break we ever got, Bolin. How do you mean it's a break? I've been telling the brass in Washington that it's Indians who've been raiding the supply wagons. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now we can prove it is, but they haven't gone to attack them wagons. The squaw said that they were going to guard them. Sure, but I've got orders that say all Indians found off their reservations are to be considered renegades and sent to Florida. They're off the reservation right now. By golly, I never thought of that. Your men are still in uniform. That's how they've been able to close in on the supply wagons. Well, we'll ride and get them. Then we'll round up the Indians as renegades. Yeah, if we're going to get there by daybreak, we better start moving. I'll tell you the rest while we travel. Let's go. Uh, get up. Get up. Back. Come, Come on. on. Get up. As day broke over the Washita Valley, the Lone Ranger and Dan Reed climbed into the saddle and headed toward the agency. They had ridden but a short distance when they sighted the six supply wagons moving slowly over the trail. And then the masked man drew in the great horse, Silver. Ho, Silver, ho! Ho, hey. ho, ho, ho! What's the matter, sir? Dan, look to that ridge of hills in the west. See those riders? Golly, they're Indians. Yes, they are. It looks to me as if they're getting ready to attack that supply train. It sure does. They're riding in a group. Dan, we've got to act fast, and you must help. What can we do? Remember the soldiers we saw last night? Yes, sir. Ride there and get them as quickly as you can. But what about you, sir? I, I'm i joining the wagon train. And then... Yes, sir? If anything should happen here before you return with the soldiers, go to Tonto. And then, never leave him. You mean, if you're killed? It's possible, Dan. Now, adios. Monsilver! Victor, Victor, we've got to get the soldiers quickly. Come on, boy. Including the drivers and guards, there were 18 men in the supply train. They also had seen the Indians riding in the distance and believing they were to be attacked, welcomed the arrival of the Lone Ranger. Pete Bascom, the wagon boss, expressed his sentiments in no uncertain terms. As far as I'm concerned, you may be an owl who'd wear that mask. Right now, I'm not particular. You brought in to help us, you're welcome. Sure are. Oh, I'm no bandit. Them Indians have been covering us since daybreak. We're getting mighty close to the reservation now. If they're going to attack, they'll do it mighty soon. Yes, you're right about that. I sent for troops, but it may be too late when they get here. Troops? Hey, what's that? Well, that's a bugle. But that means soldiers. Sure, Dan. Yes, and I see them. They're near the Indians now. The Redskins have halted. They must have heard that bugle, too. Yeah, but they're not running. Perhaps they're going to put up a fight. I'll use my field glasses. Sure, with glasses, you can see what's happening up there. Oh, so Pull easy, Mr. Steady now. Oh, oh, For the next few minutes, the Lone Ranger studied the distant hills through the binoculars, and he was mystified by what he saw. Pete Bascom and the other wagoners pressed him for information. What do you make out? There's something strange going on up there. How do you mean? Those Indians never resisted at all. The soldiers disarmed them without any difficulty. Now they're riding toward the agency as prisoners. Say, that is funny. Well, maybe the Redskins figured they'd get a better deal by not putting up a fight, huh? I doubt that. Some of them, if not all, must certainly know about the recent order from Washington. What's that? All Indians found off their reservations south of the Arkansas River are to be considered renegades and exiled to the Florida Everglades. But, to the Everglades. Well, that's worse than being shot. Yes, it is. Well, it looks as if the danger to your caravan is over. Thanks to them soldiers who showed up. Oh, if a boy of 15 rides in with more troops, tell him I've gone on ahead. Uh, He'll find me at the agency. You bet, mister. We'll tell him. And thanks a million for riding in to help us. Sure. Uh, Adios. 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 The Lone Ranger rode away from the wagons at a fast gait and headed toward the Indian agency, thinking that a serious fight had been averted. He didn't suspect that the men who had captured the Indians were outlaws, outcasts, and deserters, with no right to wear the uniform of the army. Meanwhile, Bolin, Lackey, and the others headed toward the same destination, the Indian agency. But Lackey, I still don't understand why you didn't let me and my men gun them down. A dead Indian tells no tales. I know what I'm doing, Bolin. I wish I did. We've got to make it look on the level. 
The yeah. wagon crews is watching every move, and you can bet on it. Yeah, no doubt of that. We'll take the Indians into the agency and store all our guns and take their horses and saddles. They're worth plenty. Yeah, we can peddle them easy enough. But what do we do with the Indians now that we got them? You and your men can start them out on foot, as if you're taking them to Galveston to be sent to the Everglades. Hey, where do you get that stuff? Me and my men aren't going to Galveston. Of course you're not. You get them a few miles off the reservation. All of a sudden, they make a break. You shoot them down, Sammy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get it, Lackey. But there's still one question you haven't answered. What's that? How are you going to explain this to Washington? You know good and well me and my men are deserters. When the Army starts checking... Now listen. I'm listening. When you've shot the Redskins, right on back to the place where you've been holed up the past few weeks. I'll meet you there. From then on, we'll work out of there until we peddle all the stuff we've stored up from the raids on supply trains. You mean you're quitting your job as Indian agent? You bet I am. When the Lone Ranger starts looking for his Indian friend, Tano, I want to be long gone from this reservation. Well, here we are, coming into the agency. Yeah, I tell you, men, to hurry and get the saddles off the Indian ponies. Tell them to store the guns and saddles in the agency commissary for the time being. You can pick them up later. All right, Lackey. Won't take but a few minutes. And then get them redskins hoofing it down the south trail as fast as you can prod them along. I don't want them around when the wagons get here. Yeah, cheap little dog might decide to do some squawking. And Tano with him. All right, come on, get up. Get up there, come on, get up. At the Indian agency, Tuttle knew that the outlook was grim. He realized that neither he nor any of the other Indians had any hope for fair treatment. Bolin was everywhere, shouting orders and barking commands. His men worked feverishly to get things in order for the arrival of the wagons. The saddles and guns were stored in the commissary, and preparations were made to move the captured Indians along the South Trail. But then the agent named Lackey came up on the run. Bolin! Oh, Bolin! I told you to hurry and get the Indians moving out of here. Hey, what's the matter with you? You're as white as a sheep. Look, look back there. Hey. It's him. Get that Indian Tano out of sight quick. It's too late for that now. But he'll see him, and Tano will see him. Can't help it now. Here he comes riding in. The Lone Ranger himself. <laughs> Shut up back there. You men, keep them Indians together. We'll keep them quiet. But, Bolin, what do we do? What do we say? Shut up, Lackey. You're blubbering like a baby. Don't you realize there's more than 20 of us and just one of him? Yeah, but just the same, I... Oh, 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 now, man, listen. Keep your mouth shut, Lackey. All right, I, I will. Just what are you on, mister? I'll identify myself. You don't have to. I know who you are. You do? You're the Lone Ranger. Or maybe I'd better say you was the Lone Ranger. Oh? What do you mean by that? When the great white father in Washington hears what your Indian friend's been up to... <laughs> You're not going to look so good in that mask. Are you speaking of Tonto? <laughs> yeah, him. Hey, Cork. Yes, sir? Bring that Indian named Tonto up here. Coming up, one Indian named Tonto. Come on, you. Tonto. Him and the other renegades were all set to raid that wagon train you see coming up the trail yonder. I don't believe it. I saw what happened. Here he is, Sarge. Get moving. She must up here. Yes. Soldiers say we go to Everglades. Never come back. You'll never go to the Everglades as long as I'm alive, Toto. Uh, Too bad, Indian. We caught you red-handed. Off the reservation and stalking a supply train. It's the Everglades for you. You tell lie. We guard supply train, not attack. You better get a moving, Boland. No sense standing here wasting talk. You're not taking this Indian anywhere till I've heard his story. Hey, let go of me. I'm holding you as a shield. Your men will think twice before trying to gun me down. Hey, men! Yeah. Cover that Indian! Look at him. Now, if this army don't let me go by the count of three, shoot the Indian. Right. One, two. All right, you win, Sergeant. I have no desire to see Tonto killed, even though I could have killed you. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd see it that way. Keep him covered, men. Drop him if he makes a move for them guns. Yeah, he won't try any more tricks. Here come them wagoneers. When we tell them what happened, they'll string them up. Hey, who's a kid riding in with them? I didn't see him before. Well, I don't know. But the wagoneers must have seen this critter grab you, Bolin. They've got their rifles ready. <laughs> yeah, they're tough families. They'll make short work of this mask, man. Hi, you new skinners. We got here just in time for a lynching party. How much rope do you think you'll need to string them up? <laughs> Don't make a move, mass man. They got you covered. Yeah, that's where you're wrong. Hey, what do you mean? I mean you and your men. Cover them, fellas. The first skunk that lifts a carbine, gun him down. <laughs> hey, what's the idea? Hey, take them guns off us. Take them off, or I'll order my men to shoot you down. Let's try it and see what happens, Bolin. Drop them carbines, you skunks. Drop my shame. 
How much better? You'll hang for this. A lot of you will. Interfering with the army. Why, you dirty deserter. Boy, you're you... not fit to wear the uniform of the United States Army. Deserter? Is that what you said? Yes, a lot of them are deserters. Tell them, Dan. You see, sir, when you sent me to get the troops we saw last night... Yes, Dan? When I got there, I couldn't find them. I thought surely they'd leave a sentry in camp, so I started looking around. I found the cave you and Tano told me about, and it was filled with loot from the caravans. Are you sure of that? Yes, sir. The crates were plainly marked. It was food and clothing for the Indians here on the reservation. Then I found a poster wadded up and tossed near the fire. A poster? Yes, sir. The kind lawmen send out for wanted criminals. It showed that they were deserters and the army's looking for them. When Dan rode in and told us mule skinners what he'd found out, we put two and two together and figured there was something fishy about the capture of the Indians. They had no intention of raiding your wagons. They were guarding them. Not right. Well, then Dan told us who you are. Well, sir, we started laying leather on the rumps of our mules to get here pronto. We were afraid you'd get into trouble before we could get here. You're right about that, Dan. I really was in trouble. Um, Dan, plenty smart boy. You bet he is. He sure is. He sure Hello. Is. Yeah. Tell Chief Little Dog his men in here are free. They can take over these wagons and get food to the tribe. Yeah. Me do it. And Pete. Yeah. I'm going to ask you and your men to help us get these deserters back to Fort Mason. You bet we will, with pleasure. And Dan, I. I want to thank you for what you did. Well, I only did what anyone else would have done. You know, Mass Man, I reckon nobody will ever be able to take your place if anything ever happens to you. But when Dan Reed grows up, I'm betting he'll come as near to filling your shoes as anybody. I'm sure he could. He's proved it today. You bet he has. We'll see you later, Pete. Let's go, Dan. We'll meet Tonto down on the trail. Come on, Silver! Come on, Victor! This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.